Hello, and welcome to listen to our podcast. Uh, I guess a lot of you wonder who we are and why are we here. So I would like us to introduce ourselves and talk a bit more why are we creating this podcast. So my name is Betty and uh, with me uh, here are my two colleagues. I would like uh, you to introduce yourselves. Hi, hello, welcome to our podcast. My name is Dana. I am a bachelor student uh, studying in Tartu and it is my last year actually. Now, Lera. Okay, so my name is Valeria and I'm a first year student, actually finishing my first year. Um, and I study in Finland. Yeah. Yes. Nice. <laughs> so, and about me, I'm uh, also graduating high school right now and uh, so I have to soon decide what I'm going to do next but this is uh, one hard decision to make <laughs> so and uh, maybe Dana you would like to tell our listeners why are we creating this podcast oh it will be my pleasure so we are actually here right now because this is our follow-up activity from a training course which we took all the way back in February and we chose to do this lovely podcast. We had like three uh, different uh, things yeah, we to do. Like yeah, yeah. so it was like podcast, then um, human library, <laughs> yeah, and the third one was a uh, project. So and we decided to make a podcast mm-hmm. as our follow up activities. And the topic of uh, our podcast is uh, actually introducing the Rasmus Plus project. So how about we begin doing that? Yes. So. Uh, what is Erasmus Plus program, what it includes and uh, how does it work? So basically Erasmus Plus programs are helping and supporting education systems. Also they provide with training courses and youth exchanges in different fields, like mainly around Europe. And yeah, they are organized usually with different organizations as well as in schools and universities. So actually you can find a lot of those programs like everywhere. Mm. And I would also like to add that even though it's called like Erasmus EU programs, uh, they are not limited to only uh, European countries. There are a bunch of countries that are uh, from outside of uh, European Union. You can find uh, cooperations with, uh, uh, for example, countries all the way like on different continents. Canada, yeah. mm, I don't know. Mm, mm. Yeah, different continents. They're quite w- rare, honestly, but still you can find them. Like if you look up on their um, website, like Erasmus Plus. Yeah, and if I'm correct, uh, Erasmus is in uh, 34 countries. Yeah, officially, nice. yeah, like mostly in 34 countries, they always cooperate like actively. Uh, but what about uh, if I would like to participate in a project, uh, how much do I have to pay or how is it organized? Mm, so you can find an NGO, for example in Estonia, if we're talking about our country. Then yeah, uh, usually even Facebook, that easy platform that is used a lot. And um, I can bring like an example, I am in one of the groups in Facebook. Uh, I think it's called uh, a Erasmus project looking for Estonian participant, something like that. And basically, like almost every day, they are they post different um, posts, <laughs> and yeah, like looking for participants to Lithuania, like Poland, and yeah. So actually, it's kind of fun. And also schools, like as you mentioned, you are in the high school. I know that a lot of different schools, they cooperate with other schools. If we're talking yeah. about specifically about education and let's say uh, exchange students, then uh, it is almost guaranteed that every university and almost every uh, study course or even like high schools, middle schools, they offer uh, programs where you can go like for a semester or a couple of months. It depends. It very depends. There are summer schools uh, where you can uh, go abroad 
and uh, again talk to your schools yeah actually uh, i mean like in school it's usually program is about like a week or a bit more than a week but in universities yeah usually it's like a three months or even like a study year so that depends okay but Uh, how much do I have to pay? I mean, like, what are the fees for a participant? Are there any? Okay, it's actually, like, depends. For example, in um, the Facebook group I talked about, sometimes they uh, ask you for some fees. It's not kind of, like, a large one, I would say. It's around 25-30 euros yeah, per participant. But usually it's, like, for free. For schools and the uh, the organization we come from it's free so housing transportation yeah, yeah. food mm. everything is usually paid for except for maybe your own entertainment yeah i mean like snacks and yeah that's nice yeah but uh, what does erasmus plus give uh, to participants what what do i get from there if i go there and what it doesn't give you <laughs> <laughs> you can find Look, if you're such a person, you can find uh, positive experiences anywhere. Mm, actually, yeah, yeah. It always depends how you mm, how you perceive yes. things, how you look at them, and how you learn from the ex- experience. But if we talk in general, oh, generally, it's the best thing you can experience. I mean, like, there are pros and cons, obviously. Mm-hmm. We will yes. talk about that a bit later, later. But still... For first thing you gain from uh, being in a project uh, are experiences. Yeah. yeah. And you travel as well. Yeah. Find your friends. Yeah, you meet new people mm-hmm. and you you see different cultures and you get the chance to practice uh, a new language. Yeah. Mm. If you go by yourself, I would say from my perspective, like the first thing uh, you actually do is that uh, you get out of your comfort zone. If you, it is your, I don't know, first project, uh, I don't know, it is, uh, ma- from what I've heard, it is the main reason people actually participate. So you may not be like especially passionate about a project that you are uh, participating in, but the main thing it is getting it's getting out of your comfort zone you if you go alone you don't know anybody and the usually the organizers work very hard to create this familiar atmosphere and it is uh, it helps uh, children and even adults again it depends on you it helps everyone to develop social skills and because you are traveling to a different country uh, we have to like remember that uh, not all of the people participating speak that language so and not everyone speaks perfect english so when you are communicating you are actually uh, learning to communicate in more than just in the language mm-hmm. yeah and um, with the language english it doesn't depend what level of english you have yeah when like from my experience being on different projects and quite a lot of them uh, usually at the beginning we have a board where we write our like what we are afraid of and there are a lot of comments like oh i'm afraid of my english level i mean like come on no one's perfect trust me when you actually participate you will understand your in- your english might be much better uh-huh. than you think actually yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, I would say self improvement, mm. as you mentioned, uh, is a playing huge role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, there are eight key competences for lifelong learning. So maybe something we learned in our recent project, actually. Yeah, you would mm. like to tell us about it. Yeah, like every in every project, they use these all eight key competences. And they are. I will just like list them. Yeah. So the first one was multilingual competence, then personal, social, and learning to learn competence, citizenship competence, entrepreneurship, then cultural awareness and uh, expression, uh, digital competence, mathematical, and uh, literacy competence. So yeah, basically eight of them. And throughout the project. Um, you do different activities that help you to maintain and uh, uh, like learn these new skills. So you actually you use them in your life, everyday life, but you don't pay that much of attention. 
and after this project you get to know more about those competences and skills you gain at while the end being of every there. project you actually like analyze sit and analyze what have you learned and what have you developed and something you have become better at and i believe that this is one of the best parts like at the end of every project where you actually realize how much you've done work not only regarding the topic that uh well, you are participating in, but also on yourself. I don't want to be too dramatic, <laughs> but uh, some people do say that they come out of the pr projects like uh, different people, like they're new <laughs> people. Yeah, it's really nice because like up to every project, you have this kind of reflection group. Yeah. Uh, even like sometimes every day or like at the end of project. Yeah. Uh, and it's really nice because when you speak and broadly and more thoroughly go into the topic of self-development, you can see you get those changes and then you get like sucked in these projects <laughs> and uh, participate non-stop because like you enjoy them. They are kind of repetitive sometimes, not going to lie, but still different people come and they make this project special. So these reflection groups, I believe, they are more uh, common to like these youth exchange programs, where uh, it is actually a part of the program to reflect on yourself. But even if we talk about like uh, uh, study exchange, or even if you are an organizer, I believe even then you can still analyze uh, by mm. yourself mm. what has changed. No one is like forcing you to, to do that. But uh, still, it is a part of the experience yeah. of every Erasmus experience. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, also uh, what you get from projects are new friends or new people. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, you get a new family for a week. There is a thing, especially we right now are talking mainly about youth exchanges and training courses. And whenever you come to the venue, you get a room, but you share this room with different participants from different countries. And Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah. I noticed that they do that deliberately. So they mix yeah. people together from different mm -hmm. countries. They never put like two people from the same country <laughs> into never. one room. I thought that was cruel, but now that I'm like thinking about it, it's it's it's, it's purposeful. It, like it's kind of nice. Yeah, actually, that's always even depends. Like on my last project, there were like from two, uh, in the room two Estonians and two like from other countries. So that depends how they mix. But yeah, that's ac actually kind of really nice because you learn how to live with somebody. Yeah, mm. but also it can be very scary. Yeah, I remember yeah when I was on my first project and I didn't know anyone and I found out there, like I will be in a room with uh, totally strangers. So it was From a different scary. country with different yeah. cultures. Mm. Mm. Yes. So we kind of prepare you. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, as Lera, you mentioned before, mm. traveling is also a big part of uh, participating. Yeah, that's for sure. Like It's the so-called geographical barrier. Mm. Again, we mentioned that most of these projects are free if we're talking about like youth exchange programs. Yep, yep. So it gives an opportunity to people, to children with perhaps less fortunate, uh, financially fortunate families uh, to send their uh, kid away for the child to participate. <laughs> 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 that Let's sounded go. bad. <laughs> no, Not actually, parents need some like vacation as well. So, yes. <laughs> so uh, it is free and. Uh, uh, again, not too philosophical, but mm. we live in a digital world. Everything uh, some people might know about the outside world, out of their city, out outside of their country, uh, is uh, through media. Whatever they consume, be it like newspapers or, I don't know, different kind of socials. And you form your own type of stereotypes, you have your own prejudices, and you might not even know about it. Mm. And when you participate in these countries, uh, where uh, people from all sides of Europe come together, different, that dep again, depends on the project, different ages, and you actually sit and talk with them. Yeah. And they are the people of, I don't know, a country you might have bad opinions on or whatever. You might have some your own thoughts. And it is a chance to break these stereotypes and actually see uh, how the uh, outside mm -hmm. world looks like. So. Yeah. Yes, people with different backgrounds for sure. Like you will find a lot of different personalities on the project, not depending on their country of origin, but still you learn how to communicate with different nations and maybe even people. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, and it also with the projects, um, it, it's like the famous sentence, don't judge book by its cover. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. as I've uh, experienced, it can be that uh, I assume one thing about the person I'm, mm. I just met, but uh, t 
at the end of the project I have discovered that they are totally something else. Like yeah, yeah. Like first, uh, the, your first thoughts when you see the person, so you start to judge like automatically. That happens. That's kind of natural. But still, you have humans. To, yeah, judgmental creatures. <laughs> <laughs> so actually just talk with them and get to know yes yeah, sometimes you can like see you won't be friends with this person yeah. and that's totally all right yeah things happen but still like before you judge speak with them like talk get to know them yes this is this is this is an opportunity yeah you are placed mm. in a situation mm -hmm. where you cannot go out you mm. do not you cannot fly back to your <laughs> own country <laughs> you don't have an option <laughs> But uh, I would like uh, you to tell that what is your experience with Erasmus Plus? Like, mm. what kind of projects have you participated, and how many times? And so maybe Lera, you would start. Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> mm, so I can start like where I heard from the project. Actually, it was from my friend Robert. Hi, <laughs> if you're listening. Hi, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I remember very clearly one day we were walking and he was telling me about those projects and he just asked me like, do you want to join? And at this time I was very shy. I was like, what? What projects? Like, I, first time I heard about that. And then he was like, yeah, let's go to Poland. And it took me some time to agree because he was explaining and all this stuff. I was like, does those things really happen? You can travel for free. And yeah. He signed up me to this project and I met their Dima and Merlin and this is how it all happened actually. <laughs> and yeah, that was my first project. I can say I was very shy at it. Uh, I didn't speak too much with the participants. I mainly was with the like people I knew from my team. But at the end I understood like it's it's a really big opportunity and I was really glad that I took it. Of course, like coming back I felt like very exhausted because of those non-stop kind of communications you have throughout the weeks. And then I remember going second time there to the same venue to Poland. And then I was asked like, would you like to be like a volunteer to go as a leader to Czech Republic? And I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And this is how it all happened. Actually, it's almost like been a year since that. And like, if I talk how many projects I've visited, like uh, YOF exchanges, training courses, and as a leader, approximately eight, I think. I, I don't, I don't want to lie on this. is an experienced grandma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm, and actually, there is one coming up. Yeah, like in a few weeks. That's why we're doing this podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Evaluation. <laughs> so, and Dana, what about you? Oh man, my ticket to, I have actually attended just a single Erasmus project and this is the follow-up activity of that one. And my ticket to that project was Lera. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Lera. Hi. I think she told me about this project like a month before it began. Mm. And she was like texting me every day, do you want to come? Do you want to come? We need one more person. We need one more person. And I was actually, just like she said, maybe a year ago, I would have never agreed mm. to this project. Mm. Like, again, I, I was also, I was struggling with shyness mm. and like this social anxiety that I am going to a different country, practically by myself, where we have to socialize with completely people unknown to me leave uh, them in the one room <laughs> yes yes where we would be uh, always in different like companies i was i was terrified but yeah i just again two weeks before the departure <laughs> i said that okay fine i'm probably not gonna have a second opportunity i am finishing my uh, bachelor's degree and i'm probably like going to work all the time and go to masters and mm. there's no time for that activity at all and it was again it was february everything was kind of peaceful so it's now or never yeah. and then i agreed and then i went and i don't regret it one bit actually so i, I was again i was so glad it took me a lot of courage to get over myself to like actually okay fine whatever 
I'm just gonna go and see what happens. And uh, it paid off, it truly paid off. Mm. However terrified I wasn't, it, it was nice. And again, uh, the topic of uh, our Erasmus program was uh, we are all human, solidarity on air. Mm. But I am a genetical engineer. This has practically nothing to do with me or what, or what I do with my work. So I wasn't particularly passionate about it. It was just a matter of getting out of my comfort zone. And you don't have to be like super mega passionate about something. This, the, for me, this was reason enough, and uh, uh, I wasn't the only one on that project who was like that. So just getting out of your comfort zone. So that was my reason for going, and uh, I am probably going to participate more. I truly, I liked it, and uh, I am going to go more. Okay, and uh, about me, I uh, I've been to two projects, and how I got on the first one was that um, about in 2018, I I saw a call on like Facebook for participation uh, in Poland. So I wrote to them and they told me that there are any more like uh, spots mm -hmm. on the project. And then uh, two years went on and they wrote to me again that, hey, do you want to come to Poland? And uh, I was also like shy and I didn't have the confidence, but I decided that, okay, I think that's the chance for me to get out of my comfort zone and develop. So I said yes, and I went there. A couple of months later, they wrote to me again, and hey, we have a project in uh, Czech Republic, do you want to go? And I said yes, because why not? And that's where I met uh, Dana and Lera. Yes. And now we are here. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Uh, when you went to the, your first project, yes. did you know anybody like from Estonian team? Uh, actually, I went there. Uh, and in my mind was there, I don't know anyone. But when I got there, I uh, found out that one of um, my like acquaint acquaintance, mm. who I know from uh, my childhood, mm. was also there. Estonia is a small country. Yeah. There's yeah, a big it's chance you know someone. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't count. But still, like I tell you, like you're very brave. The the like actually people who go on their own these projects they have the most brave ones okay they're shy but they're brave to like go somewhere you don't know anybody it's strange to think about because like i'm 21 mm -hmm. it shouldn't be a problem for me but then again it's fine i mean like we are all different there's nothing to be ashamed of yeah i went socializing when i was 20 like yeah <laughs> hi so but uh, maybe we could talk about what we were exactly doing on our last project mm. in Czech Republic and what was the like topic? If I remember, the project like took place uh, at the end of February, beginning of March. Yes. And yeah, it was like one and a half week project, plus like arrival days and departure. And we had a really nice case schedule there. And a lot of activities, like as usual on the Rasmus project, when you come, you have team building games and introduction to the like whole topic that is going on. Not the deep ones, just the briefly, so you can get the idea what you're gonna do like through those days. Can I mention something? Yeah. As a first time goer to this project, I had this thought in my head that, oh, well, I have school right now. So, oh, we're probably gonna have a, like a little bit of free mm -hmm. time or how we'll be able to sit and study. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> <laughs> Again, I don't know if it's specifically this project, but it is so, I don't know, action-packed that you always have something to do. Mm. It, it is actually like very packed. Yeah, like, I mean, like the Czech Republic, uh, I can mention that, like Bruno for you, the organization oh, that... Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> the organization that was uh, actually leading this project, they have the best like format of uh, doing those schedules because yes they are fully packed that at the end of the day you're like really exhausted from always thinking and yes. <laughs> like yeah but i would say they do a really great job with those like schedules because you have to do something you always do something like team building games the when you brainstorm the idea of like the topics you, you are given so you actually are engaged throughout the projects with the like with different people mm -hmm. and the it topic. is constant improvement on yourself yeah. Yeah. yeah so as you mentioned before we we wrote a project and then we uh, had the human library and uh, different people came there and yeah. uh, told their stories 
and also we made a podcast. And everything uh, revolved around the topic of inclusion. Mm. So there is a problem in the world, surprise, surprise, about uh, how uh, many marginalized mm. groups mm. are not included in society and all of our activities were centered around how we as uh, people of this society that we live in in Estonia how are we able to in our country uh, help uh, people mm. who are excluded from the general uh, public yeah. mm. and actually there may be some people don't know what human library is so basically there are a few people that are invited and they are called books And uh, when you gather, like usually one book has um, like around five readers and they tell their story and like it always depends on how deep the topic can be. They tell you about the experience, about the emotions they felt throughout the journey. Some people, yeah, they finished like dealing with those things they had in their life, but some people still struggle and they are still on this path of finding themselves and dealing with their situation but they are very brave they come and they speak uh, about the issues they had in their life or the obstacles they met they don't tell names this situation uh, yeah. with the stranger suddenly becomes very personal mm-hmm. like actually in my group i had a woman she was like talking about her like things and at the end of her story like everyone cried and yeah that was very like strong emotions and how like with every new group they open up more about the issues they had i'm glad they actually put the activity almost at the end of the week because uh, as a part of our project uh we ourselves became books actually yeah and uh, we told stories to each other and you spend an entire week with these people and yeah. oh you talk with them and it's so nice and oh you, we become friends and can we spend time together and then comes this moment where uh people again it is of, of, of the choice mm. of their consent uh they become vulnerable yeah. and i don't know it becomes so much more human <laughs> i don't know how to explain it And it, 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 but it is necessary. Mm. I believe it is necessary. Mm. Yes, part of the project with it podcast on the topic on the of place, uh, like yeah, human library. Mm, mm-hmm. yep. Yeah, you might actually recognize a book from there. All the podcasts are actually uh, up on the Spotify. Mm. So if you search uh, "We Are All Humans" or "Burnout for You," uh, you can find uh, this podcast we made and listen to them. Yeah. There are a lot of different ones, not only ours, but different teams as well. Some of them are emotional and yeah. Again, the name of the project, we're all humans. Yeah. Everyone is mm. struggling mm. with something. Mm-hmm. But maybe we could talk about some funny stories or uh, things that have happened in our projects. Okay. So uh, uh, I, I can I, I start. Mm. Uh, for me, it was kind of culture shock at this time. I was in Poland and Polish people ordered pizza and they ordered a sauce with pizza so they when they eat pizza they put sauce on it mm. for me it was like a shock i i didn't understand it and for <laughs> them it was normal thing i did they didn't understand how we didn't understand them okay that's interesting yeah cultural difference you learn from those things that's it yes that's what really nice did you try pizza with sauce <laughs> i guess i tried yeah i tried And it like? wasn't bad, but I don't <laughs> know why it's necessary to have sauce on pizza. <laughs> Extra flavor. So, do you have any stories you want to tell us? Don't know what you like to tell about, like the bar thing. The bar thing. Yeah, but the bar thing. <laughs> <laughs> so in Estonia, I, I'm not frugal. I like to spend money, <laughs> but in Estonia, the alcoholic beverages are usually like what. 8 euros, 10 euros. It's absurd, honestly, if you ask me. <laughs> so in different countries, uh, you can get drunk really easily. <laughs> uh, 18 usually... plus projects. <laughs> Disclaimer, yes, like 18 plus. 18 plus projects where they allow to drink. Yeah. You can freely get drunk because the drinks are usually really, really cheap. But this barman, again, I did not understand the problem. Mm. But uh, we were at the bar on this last project, just, I don't know, having fun, we had free time. And uh, he tried to sell us drinks like twice the price of the mm. local price. Mm. And I, we didn't know, again, we didn't know. I only noticed that there was a problem because an actual Czech person was yeah. ar- arguing. There was yeah. almost a bar mm. fight because <laughs> he tried to <laughs> charge us twice as much. We were in like this rural uh, uh, town 
where not many tourists come and I don't know if I can say this even but this guy <laughs> this barman oh he was staring <laughs> this was like a phenomenon this was like a rare phenomenon where so many people came to his bar so I guess he took the opportunity yeah actually. I, I can't really judge him as much like oh. this 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 is your day this to make money <laughs> go for it charge twice the price yeah like you see like from different perspectives if we will take a look from men's like side the barman's then yeah it was kind of a chance to earn some money but from our like side it was yeah not that good i have been into two projects and in this both projects mm. uh we played pool oh yes and I, i don't know what's up with the pool like why is it in every project but it's something I know it's so entertaining and uh, I've got the chance to practice my pool skills in mm -hmm. Erasmus Plus projects. Actually, that's interesting. Good that you mentioned it. Like, throughout all the projects I visited, I think there was only one project that didn't have pool. But every project, every venue had a pool. And that's so cool because yeah. you play with different people at the same time you, you interact even at your free time. And yeah, I was. lost my so-called pool virginity in this project. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I ever played pool. It's surprisingly Actually, competitive. Yeah, I know. I mean, like, the same, I had my first pool game. In Poland, actually, oh, yeah, on my first project. I don't know if you <laughs> mentioned it, but yeah, sport is also a part of Erasmus Plus project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if you look up on their website, you can read about those opportunities in sports as well. Uh, one more project and I'm going to be in pool championships. Yeah, <laughs> see you there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what is also good about uh, those projects are that you are not only in one city, that mm -hmm. you can go on trips, I would say. Like they organize you, for example, we were in... What? Morave. Morave. Yeah. Yes. And they, yeah, and they brought us uh, to Brno. Br Brno. Yeah. Yes. <gasps> Beautiful city, right. honestly. You're not only stuck in a one place uh, for uh, one week, but they do give you an opportunity to get out to mm. the city. Mm -hmm. Like uh, different projects, they are held in the big cities. Yeah, but uh, the ones we visited, they mainly were in small villages. And it's kind of really nice because you have this like very quiet place and they can do the activities outside if it's like very good weather. If you're from a big city, uh, I know I almost broke my neck <laughs> because I kept looking at the sky. Oh, the yes. air was oh my so God. clear. Yeah, that, that's actually true because there is no like uh, the light pollution and we can see the stars. Yes, yes. It was amazing. In Estonia, you won't see wow, those no. things. Nature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, mountains, please. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're from Estonia. <laughs> Our biggest mountain is like 200 meters above Three, sea. No, level. please, <laughs> 318, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, but still. <laughs> yeah, we saw mountains. We are proud of this. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any other stories you want to tell? maybe later on about like traveling things no. oh what no, no no let's let's do it like at the end like pros and cons of the project okay sure oh yeah thanks okay <laughs> but actually it's the next thing we're going to oh, talk actually, about yeah, yeah pros okay. and cons of uh, <coughs> okay let, oh, wait like, should we do pros or cons uh, let's go with pros, <laughs> pros okay <laughs> i will wait my turn um yeah it, with traveling yeah pros with traveling or overall like, overall yeah But like, if you will start with traveling, you see the world. Basically, uh, when the trip is being planned, sometimes there are not like a straight routes. It always depends. And basically, you can visit different countries when you're traveling. For example, to Czech Republic, we traveled from uh, Estonia to Austria and from Austria to Czech Republic. And yeah, it was by bus. So at the same time, we were able to like look around and nature and all the buildings. And stuff. As an organizer, the Erasmus uh, gives you a certain amount of money, a certain amount of budget. So yeah, this is a balance between convenience and uh, money. Yeah. So maybe for uh, the participants, this is not the best way to travel if you travel for like 10 hours. But on the other hand, if you look at it, you travel through multiple countries. Mm -hmm. And if it's like a transit of like, I don't know, three hours, mm -hmm. it gives you an opportunity to actually look around. So if you never actually go out to travel, this is a bonus. You not only travel to one country, yeah. you're actually going through multiple. I think my last project, that was um, a month ago. 
No, like a few weeks ago, I think. I don't remember, honestly, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been to Czech Republic again, yeah, and we travelled back through Germany. I don't remember the city. And we got the several hours to spend there, and it was so beautiful. I've never been to Germany. And so now when you're looking at the next project to go, you're probably going to scout for Germany yeah, as well. Yeah, like, uh, please. <laughs> Example again, uh, when I'm gonna go to this evaluation, the tickets were bought to Finland to get back to like where I live right now. And I will be traveling from Brno, the city in Czech Republic, to Prague. And in Prague, I will have like seven hours to spend. Ooh. Yeah, the, the places, I saw the pictures, oh my God. I'm so glad, honestly. I mean, like I will be tired as hell, but still like I will see the Prague. So yeah, those are pros. And obviously the pros are everything we listed in the beginning. Of yeah. f- about mm-hmm. self-improvement, mm-hmm. yeah. experiences, yeah. people, competences, yeah. Yeah. everything you learn. Like the actual topic, depending again, depending on the topic which mm. you mm. Uh, go to. It can be something uh, educational. Yeah. Actually, like with the pros, I can mention again, like finding new friends and connections. Honestly, that helps a lot. For example, as from my side, I met a really nice person on the project we'd been on and now I will be like in the summer traveling to his country. It's kind of (laughs) nice. Nice people out there, (laughs) Italia. So, but what about the cons? Okay, then that's your turn. (laughs) Please beware (laughs) if on your traveling list you see a company... (laughs) Wait, should I censor it? Oh, oh, Um, actually, can we? Or okay, those are FX bus. <laughs> Let's call it like this. <laughs> You'll know when you see it. The green ones. <laughs> so again, you never know. You never know. Anything can happen. Mm. But our trip from was from Tallinn to Vienna, Vienna, Brno, Brno, Moravec. So uh, Tallinn, Vienna was by plane, and Vienna, Brno was by bus. And this bus company, <laughs> I don't know whose fault it is. I don't know who to blame, who to point fingers to. Uh, this was my first project, so I'm sorry if I'm emotional. It's fine. <laughs> but if I remember correctly, mm. this isn't the first time that this happened. Mm. But we arrived at the airport, and uh, I think we had to wait until the bus for like three hours, or no? Yeah, three yeah, hours. Yeah, three, three hours. hours. Uh, by by the schedule. So three hours is already a lot of time if it's uh, the evening, it's night. Mm, And uh, mm -hmm. (laughs) there was almost nowhere, nowhere to sit or sleep. So we waited, we waited, we waited, and it is almost time for the bus to come. Mm. And it just doesn't come. We were texting our project uh, project leader organization. We were texting everyone, where is the bus, where is the bus? And uh, we waited, we waited an hour. There were no updates. We were just sending that. And we actually met a couple other participants. Yeah, actually. We're in the same situation. In three hours, like, oh, we're going on the same projects. Like, (laughs) hi. Apparently, yes. And... uh, it just didn't come and then we got the update that it, it would be delayed for another like two hours yeah. so all together we had to sit at the airport for six hours mm. three of those were like we knew we had to wait but like the other like one or two hours we were just sit- standing outside yeah. hoping that the mm. bus would come mm. and uh, I don't know it was stuck somewhere in uh, Croatia I don't know as a participant, it was already like kind of uncomfortable, yeah. but okay, I'll get over that. Mm. But I cannot imagine if you're an actual like uh, a leader. Oh yeah! Oh my god! I don't even kids. mention <laughs> like yeah. Uh, anything unexpected yeah can honestly when like traveling. yeah not even traveling uh overall like uh, the project sometimes organizations they lack the experience of leading these all like activities and all stuff like be patient with that it's not always perfect for sure that's the experience you get like you learn from it and it's nothing to be like sad about and yeah we didn't miss the project we were no, just no, 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 no. yeah actually oh okay so i had this thing i can tell you about when we couldn't board the plane we're going back to Estonia from Czech Republic. It was like somewhere in September. Oh yeah, actually in September. Yes, I remember now. So the thing is, I had a very tight schedule because I was moving to Finland and everything was already like tickets bought and my parents were waiting for me. And then happened one thing. When we started to board the plane from Czech Republic to Poland, and for Poland we had to flew somewhere like with the transit, but yeah, it's not important. So basically, they didn't board us. Like we went through all the checkups, everything was good with everything, with documents. But at gate, they were checking the the Corona tests. Oh man, yeah. Corona! Oh my God, COVID! <laughs> Thanks God, it's almost gone. Honestly, 
and yeah, they didn't like something. The funny thing for me was that other groups with the same tests, they left to their home countries by planes. But we were stuck. I mean, like, we went through the Polish border between Czech and Poland. They checked. Everything was fine, perfect. But now they didn't like something and they didn't board us. We missed our plane, like, if you can say that. And then we traveled home, I think it was around 36 hours. Because we took different buses and trains. But the most important thing was the organization we were working with. They were so cooperative. I texted them, I let them know, and our organization as well. Everything went smoothly. Like, in a few minutes, I got a plan uh, how to go back to Estonia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, at first, I saw, like, the ki oh, can I call them the kids? Because they were, like, uh, they were... Uh, teens. Yeah, teens, actually, yeah. Because I was their leader and I had a group. And I basically had to explain them how we're gonna get, like, home. I saw the panic on their faces. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, everything, they handled like everything perfectly and yeah, basically we were super tired and they missed me very to fit. But that's, that's, that's okay, honestly. But still, the experience we got from dealing with those problems, I can say I'm now like the perfect travel buddy because... No. Yeah, actually. <laughs> uh, now I kind of understand the system of traveling and if, it, if, if something happens, like... Come on, just text me, call me, I'll help you. <laughs> and if also, if you're a kid, a teenager, you're listening to this and you're planning to go to an Erasmus project, please be mindful of your oh, leaders. Just, please, yes, you please. don't know what they're going through. <laughs> <laughs> they may be trying their very best to get you home or to a mm. destination. So we don't want like to scare you. These things happen. It's a part of the experience. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> and Lera, I think you're very yeah. brave for handling the situation oh. with uh, these teens and like you have the responsibility. I was lucky enough to have really nice participants, yeah. honestly. They were so understandable and if you hear that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but now maybe we could talk about uh, how to get on a project, where to find projects. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. I can start with uh, schools. Uh, like school, ask your teacher or somebody higher in a, your school if you have cooperation with different organizations. For example, in my school we had and I didn't participate. How stupid of me, honestly. If you have this opportunity, like really take it. Take you it. You won't regret it. You will regret if you don't take mm -hmm. it. And later on you understand like, oh my God, I, I was missing out. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Just go and explore the things, the surroundings and all the stuff, different people. Or if you are lucky enough, you will have a friend who will like tell you that, hey, I have this project I'm going mm. to, maybe you want to come. Yeah. yeah. As Betty already mentioned, she was herself applying through like Facebook groups. And for me and Donna, it was a friend of ours who told us about this project. And if you are like in a community of some sort, something that you are passionate about, mm. usually it comes up by itself. Yeah. Because Erasmus Project, they oh, they offer a variety of different mm -hmm. topics. Uh, from, I don't know, food sustainability to all sorts of economic, to all sorts of Art, social issues. Uh, like dance things. Art, dancing. Dancing. Yes. Just go and find them. If you don't find something for you and you are truly passionate about it, make your own project. Oh, it's yeah. that easy. <laughs> okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can uh, take a look at the Erasmus Plus website. There is a lot of information. And there you can find if they have some projects going on in the country you would like to visit. But honestly, don't stick up to a certain country. Like, truly, don't. Just There's take... a colorful world out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, before even going on the projects, I wouldn't know, like, I will be going to Czech Republic so much. And I fell in love with it. The Brno city. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go back there like all its everything. Honestly, I've never heard of it before, like this project. R oh, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. me too. Like when I first went there, I was like, oh, interesting. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, that's the second biggest city after Prague in Czech Republic. And it's really beautiful. And there are lots of things to do. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah, me too. It's nice. So if you don't have a friend who will invite you, then as you said, Lera, join a Facebook group where you could get information about projects going yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Google it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or follow non-profit organizations who also are searching for participants. Yeah. Always. If anything, I have noticed that there is a shortage of participants. <laughs> Sometimes uh, when I have to gather the team, it's so hard to find them because I remember calling one person and asking if they would like to join and they asked me like, really? For free? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. 
and like going to another country I was like yes yes and they pay for your food and accommodation I was like yeah <laughs> so at first they didn't believe me that those opportunities are really out there yeah so for some at first it is an opportunity to travel for free but then Again. But then you see that there are lots of things you get from the project. Yeah, honestly. there is this is much bo- more than just free travel, free mm. accommodation and mm. free food. Yeah. Actually, it depends on you as well if it's going to be a bad experience or a good one. Find something positive in everything, honestly. I think uh when you are participating, you get stories from every project to tell, mm. for example, mm. maybe your grandkids or something yeah. in the future. <laughs> You will become fun at parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have something to tell. You have seen the world. You can create your opinion. And yeah, yeah. And throughout the projects, you meet different people. And in the evenings, during the break times, you speak with them. You get to know their culture and their backgrounds. And that's really awesome. And if your friends who haven't traveled mm. have some sort of, I don't know, misconceptions and yeah. stereotypes that they like say about the certain country, and you have actually been there mm. and spoken to those people, mm. you can be like, ah, Uh-uh. Yeah. Hold on a second. <laughs> you think you know everything. <laughs> One story. Yeah, when I was traveling with the teenagers, I asked them like before we departed <laughs> if somebody like flew on the plane because every time when we go through checkups, I always get those questions asked like what we have to take out of the luggages. I asked you the same question. Oh, it's, it's a fine. It's fine. I always get that. <laughs> It's okay. Um, so, and then I ask them, have you been ever to the plane before? And they're like, no. I was like, okay, nice. <laughs> But yeah, you can travel by plane as well. It's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> and when you travel with the leaders, don't be afraid to ask questions. Everything will be good. Honestly, I, I tell you. You're not alone in your own situation. Mm-mm, never. Just don't be afraid. If something happens and you don't like the situation, you have always somebody to talk to. So don't be afraid to ask for help. And uh, the time has come so far that our podcast will be over soon. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to add something? Mm. Oh, done. Okay. Like, it was your first project, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and you told me you want to go more, yeah? How would you like encourage others to go on those projects for the first time? It, again, it doesn't matter what age you are. Mm. You will always find something uh, good in these projects. Yeah. Remember, you're not going for someone, you're going for yourself. Mm. So if you remember that, you uh, you will definitely enjoy it. Yeah. If you are passionate about something, go look for this topic. It doesn't matter like if you know something or don't know something. Mm. Again, you said dancing. I don't know. First thing about dancing, I'm not a dancer. Uh, I'll tell you. I later. would like to learn. I yeah. would like mm-hmm. to know. Even if mm-hmm. it makes me look stupid, I don't care. <laughs> no one's care. Honestly, if you think like, oh, they will be looking at me. No. <laughs> like everyone is struggling with their own things. Yeah. They just don't have time for that. We made actually my first project, we made stickers. Yeah. Yeah. I My creative side of brain just doesn't work. I am the mathematics, the logical part of brain. So when they told us that you will now design stickers, mm. I froze. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, design? But hey, guess what? <laughs> My team won the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Not bargaining, I mean, but still, like, yeah. I guess I am a designer. <laughs> Uh, another thing from uh, this uh, sphere that you don't know what you're capable of. Mm. These projects uh, help you discover unco- yourself, uncover mm. your own mm. potential. Mm. So I remember perfectly at the end of the project where we were like discussing our like thoughts and what we did during this entire week. I remember that I was sitting there thinking we had just one week and how much we actually like created. We had a podcast, we had stickers. We designed from scratch our own project, yeah. mm. our own prototype mm. project for our country, yeah. basically up from the idea to the funding. It was basically realizable. And I was sitting there like, did I just come up with that? Did our team just come up with that? Mm-hmm. I, I think that's amazing. 
I mean, like at every end of this each session, I felt so exhausted. But that it yeah, was a good exhaustion. Yeah. yeah. You, then you understand that you did something. Oh, I, and yeah, I, uh, I would have never okay. thought that in like a couple of hours I would go from an idea to an actual realization. Mm -hmm. I I am complete the opposite of entrepreneurship, like all of this business. <laughs> 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 so to actually be a part of a group that creates something, to be a part of something creation, this was completely new to me and hey i realize that i'm capable of it so that i can actually lead a group i'm capable of mm, it mm -hmm. i never thought in my entire life i will be traveling as a leader and now i look back and i'm like yeah nice thanks to our organizations for trusting me participating in this project as you said you discover yourself and you yeah. you are the one who is creating your life and i think if you haven't been to a project yet you just have to if you get the chance just go yeah don't doubt and mm. go and sometimes your first experience might not be as you expect don't worry like try again yeah. go on a new project and then you will see that out there they'll love much more better ones Yeah, and it, it can also open new doors yeah, for you. For sure. Maybe you meet someone, as you said, you're going yeah. to his home country yeah. this summer, so yeah. And actually the year of passes we get at the end of uh, each project. Yeah. They are like plus bonus to your CV. You can bark about that, honestly. I've been on Erasmus Plus project. <laughs> I've experienced... This is a party trick. I'm a youth leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> actually a really good addition to your CV. Um, so basically, as you can see, we are from like with a different background. For example, me and Donna are university students. I'm a first year, Donna is finishing and Betty is finishing her high school. And we found the time to travel, like experience ourselves. Don't be afraid. If you have some stuff, just schedule it. You will always find at least a week, maybe. If you're working here, it's it will be it sometimes hard to find the free time. But still, don't be afraid. It is worth your time. Mm. Yes, as I said, it was nice to yeah. talk to you. Remember all the things we went through together? It was nice talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And all our listeners, thank you for listening and finding time to hear our stories and experiences. And we hope you got some information and maybe you now want to go on a project. Yeah, please go. Go. <laughs> go. Go. <laughs> But if you listen through the entire podcast, thank you yeah. for your patience. <laughs> Even if it was messy. Yeah. <laughs> But still now, we, we, get, we, we did a great This job. is our for first podcast. Give us some slack. <laughs> <laughs> We hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Have a nice day, evening, noon, wherever well, you are. Yeah, work day, like school. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>